Did you know that once upon a time there was no TV? It's a frightening thought, I know. Hi, I'm Bruce Blitz, and welcome to Cartooning with Blitz. And that's right, once there was no TV. But there were other forms of entertainment, and one of them was something called Chalk Talk. Now, Chalk Talk goes back many years, and a cartoonist would get on stage and draw a picture, and he would tell a story, he would recite a poem, or even sing a song. Uh, don't get scared, I'm not going to sing. Uh, and the sketches would cleverly help to tell the story, and it always had a surprise or a trick ending. Now, later on, I'll be doing some chalk talk for you and some doodle tricks, so stay tuned for that. Now, for our feature of the day, a special guest cartoonist will be joining us, so I know you don't want to miss that. Uh, but first, let's do something called Rabbit Tunes, and we'll, first we'll change the channel. So here I am, through the magic of television. I'm really glad they invented TV. How about you? All right, let's get started with something called rabbit tunes. Now, rabbit tunes are quick, because rabbits are quick, and because, guess what, they're drawn from rabbits. So I've got a picture here of a rabbit, and let's add some detail, and we'll draw a woman with a fancy hat. I'll make a line diagonal up there like that, and let's put her eyes in. Two circles, and let's make them half open or half closed. Depends on how you look at things, folks. And put her eyes in. And let's give her big eyelashes. And a cute little nose, not much more than that. Let's give her a lipstick. And rosy cheeks, full cheeks. We'll color it in a minute. Now for her hair, watch. Have some fun with it. Real fluffy lines going out on both sides. Maybe even some curly cues for big earrings. And some polka dots on her hat. And there it is, a woman from a rabbit. I'll take a little color for this one. Just here, her lips, rosy cheeks. Maybe a little yellow for her hat. And I like that. Okay, let's do another one. Now, let's work with the rabbit shape on its side. Now watch, it starts like that, and I want to turn it this way, and put some detail in it, and we'll make a real cool fish. Start with very large lips. Smiling, and a big full cheek and a big eye. And we'll have it looking at us. Remember, leave that big white space there. A big eyebrow. Facing up, because he's real happy. And some big fins. And some detail back here. Looks like he swallowed a tennis ball, doesn't he? But it works. <laughs> Let's see what else. How about some bubbles, which are nothing more than circles? There you go. It's cool. Let's add a little color to him. How about green? I like that. Cool. Let's do another one. Now, this time, a totally different animal. And let's start with the rabbit again. Okay, now, this time, totally different sketch. With some dots up here and some eyebrows. And down here, that could be a nose and some holes here for his nostrils and some lines on top and some detail in here. And it's going to be a mule. So we'll make some arced lines like this, and we're going to draw his body. Now, here's his feet, big floppy feet, and his back feet peeking through the back, and a big tail that's going up like this, and there's the mule. I like him. A little drop of color on him as well. He's a little bit of brown. Yeah. All right. Now let's do another one. This is a cool one. This is like a doodle trick. All right. Right here, I'll start with a magic hat. And of course, rabbits always come out of a magical hat. And this one's going to have a real magical theme to it. And you know what? I got some great doodle tricks and chalk talks lined up for you later. We have a great show for you today, I'll tell you. We have a special guest coming later. You're not going to want to miss that. Okay, now, out of the magic hat, let's have some smoke or some special effects. Poof! You know, like that. Okay, now see what else we can do here. Let's have some lines up here. I got it, like here. And some more, some more lines, some more effects. 
This will make sense in a moment, I guarantee it. All right, now let's see what else we can do. Okay, uh, let's put some holes and some lines. And let's darken this in. You're going to like this one. This is one of my favorites. Uh, let's see what else here. I think that's about it. Let's put some lines like this, like it was a magic trick. And where do you see this one? Now, you've all heard of the great Houdini. Well, get ready for... The Great Upside Downy. <laughs> like that? Okay, now, try some of these at home. See how many sketches you can come up with. <coughs> now stay tuned for the feature of the day. Now for the feature of the day, a special guest cartoonist will be joining us. The artist that created the funny, one-year-old, diapered toddler comic strip star, Marvin. And since 1982, Marvin's been making people laugh in hundreds of newspapers every day. That's a lot of gag writing, folks. And Marvin starred in his own television special called Marvin, Baby of the Year. And he's appeared in many book collections, and the list goes on and on, and he's... I think that's him right now. Come in. It is. Folks, Tom Armstrong. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Hi, Bruce. Great to have you here. Great. Oh, I'm just having a seat right here. Me. Oh, All my right. pleasure. Now, as I said, the strip's been around since 1982, but Marvin doesn't seem to be getting any older. What happened here? <laughs> <laughs> We're defying uh, the usual aging process. Okay. I, 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 one time I did try to have him stand up and walk, and, and it sort of spoiled the whole effect to me. Okay. Part of the charm, I think, of Marvin is the fact that he's this, this little helpless baby, like all babies, uh, and yet when, he, when a baby enters a household, suddenly they're the dictator. They take over everything. Everything revolves around this little <laughs> mass of flesh that sits on the floor and can't do anything for themselves. Mm -hmm. And when I tried to stand him up and walk him around for a few weeks, to me it, it lost that. He became independent and he lost some of that, uh, that special period mm -hmm. of, of babyhood. Well, Marvin's anything but uh, helpless. I mean, when you hear him uh, speak and what he, you know, what he, what he thinks about. He doesn't actually speak. Not, he well, when thinks. he thinks. When he thinks. <laughs> I mean, what he thinks about. Uh, now, what was your inspiration for Marvin, Tom? Marvin is based on my son, uh, Jonathan, and my wife and my first time experiences as parents. And uh, his hair is the result of my son. My son has five colics on his head. Okay. <laughs> and so Marvin's disheveled hair is based on my son. Now, my son is now 21 this month. Oh, really? Okay. And, uh, he uses in industrial college. strength of gel <laughs> on his hair, right. is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, he's going for uh, uh, some bizarre haircut now. It doesn't, doesn't matter what it looks like. Okay. No more calic. Yeah. Actually, the calic works for it. You know, the bed head look? Yeah, right. <laughs> now, you're drawing used Marvin to be a right negative now. is now a positive. Okay, well. Yeah, this is Marvin. He's kind of a plump baby. My son was a plump baby. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, the pediatrician put him on a diet. <laughs> and uh, so it's all based on reality. He's a, he's a great character design. I love to watch him well, draw thank him. thank you. Yeah. Look at that. Now, when you work, you're using Marco now for, uh, we're working larger for uh, TV here. Right. But when you do your strip, what kind of uh, pen would you use? I use a mechanical pen. They okay. come in different sizes, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, for the border, for heavy things, I use a five or a seven for heavier line. Uh, that gives me the flexibility for, for the close-ups, <laughs> like around the eye and stuff. I'll use a, um, like a number one or, or double lot zero. Okay. It works. Now, Marvin lives with his cousin, Megan. He used to live. He used, used to, to live. live. We oh, jettisoned okay. her out of the house about six months ago. Oh, all right. Well, draw Megan for us. Megan is based on my daughter, who is now uh, 16 in the junior in high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, she came along four years after Jonathan. And when I introduced her into the strip, uh, I, John, uh, Marvin was so smart, he needed somebody that was his equal. I mean, he was obvious that Marvin was smarter than his parents. So right. he needed something a little brighter <laughs> than himself, a little challenge. And it dawned on me one day I was dressing my daughter Jennifer when she was a little baby for church. And I was a typical doting father, and I insisted that she wear everything pink and the little girly, kind of lacy, you know, puffy stuff. And it dawned on me one day, getting ready for church, that you know, already I was stereotyping her that this is the way a girl should look. And, uh -huh. and as a baby, she had no recourse. She had no say-so in it. You know, they just kind of go along with the program. Yeah. And so that was the basis of Megan, who... Uh, She's a little bit of a feminist, isn't she? She dresses like she does because of her dad, but, but she becomes, on the inside, she's a feminist. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Okay, now how do you come up with gags, Tom? Tell the people at home how you come up with so many gags. <laughs> I know it's very easy uh, to do, right? You just yeah. come right out, yeah. <laughs> boom, 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 right? It helps, it helps when the bills come in the mail. <laughs> That's a good inspiration. You become inspired it's real fast <laughs> <laughs> when that happens. Uh, they just have to be, they dream, you dream them up. Mm -hmm. I, it's kind of like uh, one cartoonist described it as, as a, like a little mini movie. You sit there and you, you play your characters and you put them in different situations. Yeah, you got this okay. stock character and you say, well, uh, I'll try Megan in here, I'll try Bitsy the dog here and see if anything, you know, is inspiring for a gag. Well, you know, that, that, that's, that's important. You said that, that your characters. Now, if you're using your uh, reoccurring characters, you know what they would or wouldn't do, and that helps you come up with gags, as it opposed does. to a, a gag a day unrelated kind of uh, uh, strip where they just have to come up with a joke for joke's sake. But here you have characters that it has to apply to. Right. They sort of dictate somewhat yeah. what you're doing. On the other hand, I was thinking the other day that to describe this profession of mine, I've got basically five characters, and I've been doing them for seven, 16 and a half years. And I thought, it's kind of like the movie Groundhog. You know, every yeah, Monday you start keep, out, yeah. it's like you're going to revisit these same keep characters, over these over same again, five yeah. characters. Uh, and uh, try to come up with some new gag, sure. seven new gags, basically with the same theme. Yeah, she's great. She looks great. Now, you mentioned Bitsy before, the dog, and that's maybe one of my favorite <laughs> characters in the strip, design-wise. I love Bitsy. Bitsy's my favorite to draw. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's, and let's... I've got a Bitsy at home, too. It's a little miniature schnauzer. Oh, okay. It came after Bitsy. But... I have two dogs. I love my dogs. Bitsy, uh, again, was a factor brought in because um, he's actually probably smarter than Marvin. Marvin would never admit that, but he uh -huh. actually is, I think. And uh, it took me a long time to get a handle on how to write Bitsy because, uh, you know, there's so many dog strips out there. And originally, Bitsy was an outdoor dog, like we had one. After it was an indoor dog, then the baby came along, they didn't get along, so it became an outdoor dog. And that was the okay. original premise of Bitsy. I see. Uh, pretty soon I brought him in the house, but I couldn't get a handle on, on what his personality was. And I was watching an old, um, some old movie, uh, Mr. Belvedere and mm -hmm. Clifton Webb played this uh, sort of arrogant English butler that sort of he was the butler but he kind of put everybody else in the household in their place mm -hmm. I remember that movie. and that sort of became I said that's Bitsy you know he's got the heavy eyelided look yeah, the, the heavy eyelid, look, yeah. and um, very much in control yeah and 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 so he he kind of puts Marvin in his place doesn't hesitate to insult the baby and it's kind of a bizarre situation Bruce is you know because Marvin doesn't talk mm -hmm. the dog doesn't talk Right. But these two people think to each other. One's an animal, you know, right. a dog, and one's a baby, and they think to each other. But I, I didn't want to go there, you know. It's too <laughs> but the communication still happens somehow. It and does. That's the main it thing. does. They get, they get their points across. Well, that's great. Look at that. You know, at home, if you're designing your own comic strip, just keep that in mind that, you know, you want to have a character that is definite. Like, you know, the, this character is like a based on a character he saw in a movie, Tom, and it works so well. And now, I like this part right here. You left that for a shine. Is that correct? That's, That's like right. a highlight or a shine. Yeah. If dogs' no, noses are, are big and black and shiny and wet. Make that a, a, a process blue in the Sunday paper. Okay. That highlight. Now, uh, Marvin's parents, Jeff and Janet. Would you draw Jeff them for Jenny, us? Jeff and Jenny, right. Jeff and That's my wife and me. Okay. As I draw them, you might see a, a resemblance there. Okay, let me get this paper off. I'll start up here. Yeah, okay. And tell us a little bit how you construct their heads uh, I, everything if you'll notice when i'm drawing if if you've been paying attention i have been everything not just you but everybody else <laughs> <laughs> there will be a quiz later okay so i always start out with a nose now, i don't know why that is other than that everything mm -hmm. in a in a drawing sort of centers around mm -hmm. the nose is the is the practically the dead center of, a, of the personality in the face and somehow that gives me the guidepost to where to go from there mm -hmm. okay and everything like else landmark. relates to that yeah, yeah all right and everything else is proportionate to that nose. And in Jeff's case, it's quite a nose to be yes, proportionate. Yes, it is. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> now, he's got a, a, That's some he's got a comb over a receding hairline. So it kind of looks something like this. It's always a little bit out of uh, messed up. All right. And both these characters have evolved. All the characters really evolved style-wise over the years. I'm always experimenting. And I think part of that is because uh, I didn't train as a as a commercial artist, my training, my degree is a BFA in fine art, oil painting. Okay. So I think coming out of a fine art school, uh, I tend to experiment more. Coming from that fine art approach, you know, you're always trying to try this, not try that. Instead, so there's never been a definitive Marvin style, I guess. It mm -hmm. evolves. It's always evolving. Now, you did a lot of caricature work, too, in the past, didn't you? That's really where I got my start. Okay. Uh, in high school, I got a job with a coffee house drawing caricatures in this uh, very 
dark environment. If you can yes. draw a caricature of somebody's girlfriend and, and he doesn't slug you in a dark environment. Not bad. Think of how much yes, better you can yeah, do in the light. Yeah, that's, that's training, great. Training under the gun. <laughs> that's Jeff. And that's then Jeff. Jenny, typical to uh, most comic ships, she's, she's more attractive than he is. I don't know why that is, but usually in comic ships, well, even sitcoms, the wife is always very attractive and the, the husband yeah. tends to be kind of a doofus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. And you wonder how... He's married to such a person. Yeah, yeah you know. know, in real life, you say, nah, never in a million years. She recently oh, had wow. a change in hairdo. She's got more of a part in the middle look now. Mm -hmm. A much smaller nose to one She used to have her. more of a football helmet type hair. Yeah. Yes, she doesn't. Luckily, Marvin didn't seem to inherit his dad's nose. He has. We've done several gags where he lives in fear that his nose will evolve into Jeff's nose, but so far it hasn't. Well, the, the, the comic strip just makes me laugh, and uh, many years of continued success. I could watch it draw all day, but we're out of time right now. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for coming, Tom. My Thanks pleasure. Thanks so much, this is and I hope great. you enjoyed this it at home. Kick. Great. Uh, next, stay tuned for Cartoon Doodle Tricks. Thanks again. This is great. For today's Doodle Tricks, I got a lot of things planned, and I got some friends stopped by. How are you doing, guys? Hi. Hi. Okay, let's start with tons of pun drawings. You know what that is? No, tons no, of pun. No, no. Are, puns are things that have two meanings, and for cartooning, it's a natural because you can draw it, and you can, well, I'll tell you what, I'll draw it, and then you tell me what you think it is. Let's start with this picture right here, and I'll add something to it, and you tell me what it is. And up here, I'll make some detail and some dots like that. And some lines going this way, and some lines going that way, some musical notes, and who knows what it is? Uh, uh, no. Tuna fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do another one. Okay, this time, I've got her running. Now let's put something right here. That's a butterfly, right? Put some... Lines like this. And what is this one? I don't know. Internet. <laughs> right? Yeah. Internet. Okay. Cool. Let's do another one. Okay. Now this one, I'll draw this right here. Now this is the part we're concerned with right here. And I'll give you a hint. It's a room in your house. Oh. Kitchen. <laughs> All right. Now, this next one is going to be a definition. And in cartoon world, we call it a definition. So, the definition of a photographer is a picture taker. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a while, I understand. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's do another one. We have no more tons of fun. Who said good? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do another one. Let's start, and we'll draw a couple birds. And we'll start with circles, just like that. And they'll be lovebirds. So I'll have them joined at the beak there. And there's a dot there, and a dot there, and eyebrows. And here's their body. And their feet. And some wings. And they're in love. So let's put a heart right there. And there you got the two lovebirds, but they better watch out because here comes the cat. <laughs> like that? Okay, let's do another one. Now, remember I said at the beginning of the show that I would do some chalk talk tricks for you? All right, let's get started with that. And first I'll tell you a poem. Did you ever hear the poem where it says, a rose by any other name would still smell sweet? Yeah. Okay, so I'll draw a rose. In this pose. And everyone knows that a rose is the most beautiful flower that grows. And for an extra treat, 
I'll draw these lines to show you that it smells so sweet. But no matter how the expression goes, everyone knows that a rose is a rose. Is rose. Wow. <laughs> and there's rose. That's great. You like that one? Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's do another one. And this time we'll start by I'll draw a frog. In a pond. And there's the frog in the pond. Now he eats up flies, of which he's very fond. And people watching, well, they always laugh. Because a frog may like flies. But not a giraffe. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, next let's do something called the Count and the Countess. A little respect, please. And you'll help me with this one. You help me by counting backwards from nine. Okay? Ready? Here we go. Nine. nine eight, eight. Seven. Six. six Okay, now watch. Over here, we'll make his ear, and here will be his eyes. This will be his mouth, and let's have a big mustache right here, and another eyebrow there, and we can add to the three, and we'll make this his shirt, ruffled shirt, and his cloak, and there you have the Count. Like that one? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do another one. This time we'll draw the Countess. And help, help me out with counting again. Ready? This time we'll start with the number seven. Ready? Here we go. Seven. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Okay, this is a good one. You'll like this. I make a smile there and a lower lip. And here's her eyes and some eyelashes. How's that? And this is her ear, but we've got to put a lot of circles for fancy earrings. After all, she is the countess. Now, up here, let's give her a real fluffy hairdo. And you're wondering what that line is there for the one. Well, if we add to that, we can have her wearing a tiara. And there is the Countess. You like that? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed it and you at home. And for our Blitz tip, well, in life, you have to be willing to take a chance sometimes, right? We can't get the second base with one foot still on first. Right? Yeah. I'm Bruce Blitz saying thanks for being with me and help me out, guys. Keep, Keep on, on cartooning. cartooning.